Hey, welcome to BBN, Bible Believers Network Christian Podcast, Home Bible Study. This is Minister Derek O. Jennings Sr., your host. We're doing another Facebook Live insert. This is something that I wanted to touch on. It's not going to take a long time. So uh, this is something that every uh, believer, every born-again believer, uh, every disciple of Jesus Christ, every Christian, um, wants to share this with everyone because, you know, we've been um, told things from the pulpit a lot of times that are not accurate. And so this is the BBN um, mantra where we actually attack and correct a lot of things that are not true, but we just do them because someone yelled it from the pulpit real loud and they may have spoken in tongues and, and danced a little bit and we said okay well since they have a position of a preacher a title and uh, they may be a, a, a female first lady and you know we don't need no first men but we got those two but you know it could be someone that calls himself an evangelist or a apostle or prophet or preacher or whatever a pastor bishop and they tell us to not claim the illness. Don't claim it. Don't say my illness. Don't say my sickness or my illness. And it's been going on for years and years and years. And the thing is, is it biblically based? And what I find is, is that people get intimidated because the, 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 the people that say it said with such a conviction and it seems like if you say my sickness or my illness you don't have the kind of faith that you need that these big preacher hollering people normally African American across the pulpit are saying don't claim this illness don't claim, don't say my sickness just say that belongs to Satan that belongs to hell, that belongs to the devil and then you know by his stripes we're healed and by his stripes, we were healed, you know, are healed and were healed, New Old Testament, New Testament. And so when you do that, everybody gets into a real frenzy and starts, yeah, 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 bug dancing and, and hollering and agreeing. And the one that says, well, my sickness, you know, now, now, now here's the thing. We are in pain. We are taking pharmaceutical medicine that has... 15 to 20 side effects per pill. We, we go to the doctor about the illness and we are actually on the medicine that uh, they say treats the illness instead of doing it a natural way, which is better. But we're on pharmaceuticals and we're going to the doctor and we have a diagnosis and we have the symptoms and the pain and the reality of the sickness. Yet we're told not to claim it, not to speak it, not to say it but to disregard it and say it's not mine. And is this biblical? Is this what God would have us to do? Well, I'm just going to go to some scripture real quick and uh, show you how you've been bamboozled <laughs> and lied to. And, and this is the problem because we become spiritually uh, uh, retarded when it comes to um, understanding the word and rightly dividing it. It is much easier to be intellectually ignorant and retarded because you don't have to study to show yourself approved and you don't have to rightly divide the word. You can just repeat what people say that holler real loud across the pulpit. But does it benefit you? It actually does not benefit you because when you go against the scriptures, even if you think you're operating in faith, then you're actually not operating in faith. You're operating in ignorance and you're operating in a lie. So before I get into it, this is BBN, Bible Believers Network, Christian Podcast, Home Bible Study. And you can reach us at area code 317-892-9311. That's 317-892-9311. And you can always visit us on the web at www.biblegate.blogspot.com. That's www.biblegate.blogspot.com. If you'd like to be added to the email blog blast, you can email me at deryc underscore j at yahoo.com. And to 
really get notified real quickly, just click on the YouTube video. This video is going to be converted to a YouTube video. Click on that video, hit subscribe, and click on the bell, and you'll be notified via your social media. All right, let's look at Psalms 103, 1 through 3, and see what the Bible says. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Uh oh, now let's get down to the benefits of the job here. We're laborers together with him. And forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. So these are the benefits of being saved. He forgives all my iniquities. That means my sin that I done crafted. I ain't just sin that, you know, um, accidentally. I did it internally. I thought it out and then I sinned. Who forgive all thine iniquities, all thine. That means um, <laughs> it belongs to you. It belongs to me. You could say all my iniquities or all thine. It's a, you could interchange that. Who healeth all thy diseases. That means you got diseases and sicknesses and illnesses. So I'm going to bless God for his benefits of forgiveness of sins and who heals all my diseases. Now, in a correlating scripture here, 1 John 1, 7 through 9. But if we walk in the light, that means you got your eyes open spiritually and can see something because the God of this world has blinded the minds who don't believe and understand truth. He says, that, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, now here's the kicker. This ties to the other scripture. If we say that we don't have sin or iniquity, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But also, who forgives my sins or my iniquities and who heals all my diseases. Remember, diseases didn't come around till sin. So all this is saying, if you say that you don't have sin, you're a liar. Now, wait a minute. In this scripture, the sin and the, and the illness are combined in Psalms 103, 1 through 3. Okay. And now, and now let's just like, act like we got some sense. Um, when you go to the scriptures, I, I'm not going to read everything. I just have a few references here. Uh, Jesus cured the nobleman's son, John 4, uh, 46 through 47. And so uh, once more he visited Canaan and Galilee where he had turned the water into wine. Now, some people say, well, no, nah, it wasn't water. You know, it was just wine waiting to be, it was water that was waiting to already wine. No, it wasn't. It was water. And he changed it into wine. Don't claim that it was water. See, that's the kind of foolishness that we do. But anyway, and there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick. Well, don't claim that he was sick. At Capernaum, when this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judah, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son of nothing because he wasn't sick, because he wasn't claiming it, who was close to death. Did you see how silly we are? Now, let, let, let me turn to another scripture. Oh, Jesus cast out an unclean spirit in Mark 1, 23-28. And, and, and it says here, then, just then a man in the, their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, well, don't claim that you possess. Claim that you just may need some psychotropic drugs or something, you know. Just, it's just a natural illness or something. It's not, you're not possessed. But then it's not a natural illness. Don't claim it. You're just going through a phase. The devil's just messing with you. See, that's what we do. But it says, what do you want uh, with us? That's what the Spirit said. What do you want with us, uh, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And he said, be quiet, and said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. Well, it's not in him because he don't have it. <laughs> the unpure spirit shook the man violently and then came out of him with a shriek. Okay. And so 
Here's another one. You know, like we all get sick sometimes. Uh, Jesus cured Peter's mother-in-law uh, of a fever. But don't claim you have a fever. You know, you don't have no fever. You know, you just, uh, that's the devil. That's of the devil and it's, it belongs in hell and don't claim it. You're not sick. I ain't claiming it. You know, I'm, I'm healed by his stripes. But see, this is how we can fall into being a liar because how can we claim the benefits if we're not using them for nothing? And if he said the benefits of God are he cleanseth all my iniquities, forgiveth all my iniquities and heals of all my diseases. So Simon's mother-in-law was uh, in the bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. Well, why would he tell Jesus if he did nothing needed to happen? So he went to her and took her hand and helped her up. And the fever left her and she began to wait on them. And then Jesus healed the leper and so on and so forth. And then you could go into the book of Acts where Peter heals the lame man. And, and um, let's say Peter heals uh, Ananias of the palsy, cerebral palsy, you know, and so the, uh, Paul heals a crippled man and, and, and different things like that. And so you can do your own research. I'm not going to make this long, but look at what we've done to ourselves. Look at what we've done to ourselves. And not only this, we intimidate the uh, immature saint, the, the, those that are newly saved, the babes, into copying and pasting what we're saying. We're, basically, we're just lying. And it's become an acceptable religious lie because it, the Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and don't forget his benefits. I can't use the benefits at my job if I don't need, like, I can't claim, you know, let, let's say some, something uh, dealing with the, the, the doctor if I'm not going to the doctor, but I claim something from the doctor. That's fraud. Why would I claim the healing of God? I'm going to stand up at church. I'm going to testify and talk about God healed me of cancer. God healed me of type 2 diabetes. God healed me of arthritis. God healed me of, of epilepsy. But then you say, through the process, before the healing was manifested, I don't have it. I'm not claiming it. What are you doing? You're becoming a fraud. Because if you use a benefit and claim a testimony that what God did, but then you say, I don't have it, let God be true and let every man be a liar. He says, who healeth all thy diseases. And then, like I said, if you say you have no sin, then that also goes, if you have no disease, then you're a liar. And the truth is not in you, according to 1 John 1, 7 through 9. And so, that's all I had. I don't need to make this long. I think you get the point. You could just go ahead and, and go through all the healing uh, times where someone was actually physically healed by Jesus or one of the apostles. Go in the Old Testament. Now, is it anywhere that that person said, I don't have it, I don't claim it? Where is it at in the Bible? Where is it at? If you could find it, show me. You know, I, I, I will admit I'm wrong. I'll come on here and do an addendum. But nobody says in the scriptures, I don't have it. I'm not claiming it, but God healed me of it. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But I get, you know, rebuked in church when I point that out. I get rebuked in church when I point that out. And to me, when I look at the scriptures for what it says, then I have sickle cell anemia. And when, when God comes by, <coughs> see, I cough. But see, someone say, don't claim the cough. When God comes by and heals me, I give him up the praise, honor, and glory. I hope this helps somebody. God bless you.